my name is Bill Deshan, as you probably know. I like to read books. Well, I recently just finished a book called A Higher Call, and it is about, it's a World War II book about two pilots, one American pilot and his bomber crew, and another pilot, a uh, German uh, fighter pilot, his name is Franz Stigler, and the American pilot's name is Charlie Brown. And what happened between them was historical and significant because it was a moment of civilization or peace in the midst of war. What happened was uh, Charlie Brown's bomber crew, the B-17, was had returning from a, a rather difficult battle over Germany where their bombing group got the crap beat out of them and they were struggling home with just with holes in them and people dying and stuff like even in their back rudder wing was all shot off which defied laws of physics that they weren't even in the, on the ground or in the sea and this um, Franz, his name was Franz, his name is Franz Stigler was the pilot, the German ace, he was already very experienced even though the bomber crew was on their first mission and he had probably participated in knocking down all those people but then later on he pursued them and he caught up to this bomber and these guys were dying, and they had their, all their gunners, their, their guns were frozen, they were trapped and stuff like that. And they were terrified when they saw this guy, because this, 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 this uh, fighter came up and came right up next to them, and they were like, oh my god! They couldn't do anything because their guns weren't working. And, this, and Franz, he saw, he saw how scared they were. He was amazed that they were flying, because their bullets, bullet holes everywhere, and their rudder was missing. And uh, he could even see, they were so messed up, but he could see into the belly of the... Uh, the belly of the bomber that these guys, some of the airmen were helping each other because there was some guy that was wounded and they were helping him and he was just like, this is amazing and he, he felt actual great compassion for these guys, his fellow airmen, because there was a gentlemanly feel between them and he, he opted not to shoot them down, which confused the Americans and the bomber um, and they, he just kept flying along with them and they were just like, what is he doing? And he tried to signal them and stuff like that, you'll never make it across, you'll never make it back to England because they're still over, um, they're still over Germany, and he sees, he realizes that they're flying right back over to the coast of Germany, where there's a whole bunch of flat gunners who would easily knock him down. And then he was so compassionate, or whatever it was, that he actually uh, flew in formation with them over the flat guns. And so the flat gunners, they were like, "That's an American bomber. We should shoot it." But also, that's a one of ours. It's a German fighter, so we better not. And they, everyone was confused. And he flew right over, and they got to the North Sea. And then that's when he said, he started signaling to them, you should go to Sweden, you'll never make it back to England. And they were like, what, what, we don't understand. And he eventually gave up, saluted, and flew off, hoping that they'd survive. Forty years pass, and these guys finally meet. And the story is told through that. And there's just a lot of interesting details about it. Um, neither, neither crew told anybody about it because the Americans were told, no, that would be bad because people would think all the fighters are nice and they'd get shot down instead of fighting as they should. And the German, of course, didn't tell anybody. Franz didn't tell anybody because he thought, well, I could be shot for that because that's clearly treason. And But he still felt he did the right thing. Some interesting tidbits that I found really interesting was that, uh, you know, the, uh, the German Air Force and the, the airmen had this sort of brotherhood and they all respected each other, I think, very different from the infantry who were, you know, stabbing each other in the back and slitting each other's throats. Airmen had this more gentlemanly thing and it turns out all the German Air Force hated the party, which was the Nazis. They all hated them. When a rookie would come in, they'd go, so, are you part of the party? And they'd go, no. And they'd go, okay, you're in. Cool. Very interesting. They saw, these guys saw themselves, saw the German, I mean, the Germans saw the English and the Americans as their opponents, but Hermann Goering, who was the big cheese jerk face, they saw him as the enemy more. He would actually call all the, he would just like, he was just a terrible, brutal, bad leader. When, um, you know, when they, Germany started losing the war, they had to evacuate Africa because the Americans and British were pushing them out of Africa back towards Italy and so forth. And when they all evacuated, Goering sent a big note to everyone saying, to all the airmen who were in, who were in North Africa, not, you know, good work, but you guys are all cowards, and if I had my way, you'd be shot. That's the kind of guy he was. Um, also interesting was that, you know, they, as they established over the Battle of Britain, which is when the Germans were bombing England, um, and they were fighting a lot in the air. That's the Battle of Britain, it's all in the air. Um, and on the ground.
ground when you're being bombed, but that's not much of a battle. Anyway, they would, uh, they, of course, they made a, a very good code. Don't shoot down anybody once he bails out, because those are, those are your brothers just fighting the best they can. So don't shoot anybody when he's flying down in the air and a parachute. And that was a respected tradition throughout the end. But then by the end of the war, when the Germans are really losing and sort of going all the way back to Berlin as they get squished in, the Americans realized that, you know, one, one fighter could shoot down a whole bomber crew of 10. And so by the end, the Americans were actually the first people, the first, according to the Germans, the first people to actually shoot at guys at, um, at shoot at guys in, um, in their parachutes because they realized that this one fighter, if he lasted all the way to 1944, he was probably really good. So um, they had to shoot, they had that, the Americans started shooting guys in parachutes to just save their own bomber crews. War is hell. Um, so then, anyway, afterwards, Franz, he, after the war, he, you know, was treated pretty badly by his fellow Germans because the Germans blamed, the German people blamed the airmen for not defending themselves against all the American and British bombs that were happening, as we know, destroyed all of Germany through excessive bombing, um, which, of course, was a reaction to them bombing London. But the people didn't know, that. all they knew is that basically, while they were starving to death and everything like that, the airmen were healthy and strong and all this stuff, and Franz actually felt pretty guilty about it, but after the war, that didn't help any, and, you know, they would, when they, when they would see him walking around in his uniform, it was the only clothes he had, they'd just sort of scowl at him, like, you're a scumbag, you know, hope you enjoy, I hope you're living, feeling nice and fat. And then when he, uh, after the war, he eventually moved to Canada, and when this finally came out 40 years in the 90s, or, yeah, somewhere in the 90s, this became a big story when these two airmen met, and it was a beautiful story, where they all became, they, were, they saw each other's brothers and all this stuff. But every now and then, Franz would get a couple phone calls from, you know, Canadians or something. Hello, is this Franz Ziegler? Yeah, traitor! That's obviously from, a, like, German, I guess. Or, hello, is this Franz Ziegler? Yeah, go back home, Nazi. Even though, of course... He couldn't explain to those people that hate him so much. Well, I wasn't a Nazi. I didn't like the Nazis either, but that's the way it was. Anyway, this is a very intense uh, story about a uh, very intense book about. Uh, the, it's basically a war story. He uh, it's the book mostly follows Franz's life through, you know, his Air Force days up before, up and until that encounter with the bomber, and then afterwards. And it's a very interesting and moving thing. And I was I got misty a number of times, and also very upset about how hellish war is and anything. If you feel like reading it, I recommend it. I got it at the library. It came out in 2012.